All right, what's going on guys? It's Nelson with Fish Another Day again. So we're actually out here poke poling right now. Uh, haven't done a poke pole video in a little bit, but um, it's, it's hard to come by a low tide day, uh, typically around the September time. So it's now October. This is probably the first low tide day that I've seen that I can actually get to. That's, you know, not like two in the morning. Um, it's currently 3.30 p.m. right now. Peak low tide is going to be at 5.30. Why am I here two hours early? Water is still out. Uh, so that means fish are probably still hiding in the holes and not just trying to vacate as soon as the water leaves. That's why I always come out early. If you arrive right at low tide, you get a lot less time to poke. So always come out at least an hour early is what I would do. But um, yeah, what do you need to bring? Uh, rocks are slippery, so wear whatever uh, footwear you think is appropriate. I personally wear these kind of boots all the time. Um, other than that, uh, some people like to wear waders. I, sometimes I'll wear waders depending on where I'm going. This particular location, these boots are great. Um, and then the tools that you'll need, first things first, This is my telescopic poke pole. So it goes from a shortened length of six feet and I can actually pull this all the way out to 12 feet. Um, as far as I know, I think this might be the first DIY telescopic poke pole. Um, I put out a video on that about maybe a year ago now, uh, but check that out. I'll put it uh, in the link in the description and then there's a card above too. So that's how to make the telescopic poke pole. It costs like five or $10 or something like that, super cheap. Um, and it's super durable too, it's made of PVC. Um, and then aside from that, the bait that you'll need, I have this little bait bucket here, or this little uh, bait container, also homemade. It's just a little um, vitamin pill bottle. And there is salted squid in here. You don't need to salt the squid, but I salt it just because I always use leftover bait and I don't want it to be spoiling, so. In all the poke pulling that I've done, I've always used old bait. Um, part of it is because I'm kind of frugal, but also I don't want to waste anything either. Um, and the other thing you'll probably need is a pair of fishing pliers, because when you're poke pulling, oftentimes you're gonna catch monkey face eels. They are extremely slippery. So a pair of these uh, fishing pliers, and then also I like to bring a net with me. So the net is just so, you know, if I pull a fish up, I want to make sure I can, you know, land it because I've lost tons of fish by not having a net with me and it just drops right off the hook, right back into the hole. So bring a net, you have your poke pole ready, and then I think I've covered everything. All right, so uh, let's, uh, let's get out there. I actually have a friend that's poking, uh, poke pulling with me today too, so I think it's his uh, first time. So hopefully, hopefully we get something. All right, let's go. By the way, this is a size four hook. <clears throat> it's a size four hook. And uh, I also recommend you guys do bring gloves out here just cause these rocks are sharp and uh, sharp, slippery, not a good combination. Always wear gloves is my recommendation. So if you need to catch yourself, you don't slice your hand open. All right, let's go. Typically when you're poke pulling, you wanna look for little crevices. All I'm doing is finding these little crevices going around where like, you know, typically a couple rocks come together in a tight spot. And what I'm doing is poking in between those spots, kind of leaving it there for a couple seconds and then seeing if anything is interested to take a bite. Five, 10 seconds is usually all I give it. And then I just kind of move on to the next little hole. And you don't want areas where there's like a bunch of rushing water either. So you wanna just have relatively calm pools and then just kind of poke around. That's pretty much it. So let's see if we get anything. All right, so this hole here seems pretty unassuming, right? I mean, I'm literally still standing on the sand. I'm just gonna try it out. Cause I've caught some Pretty good fish out of holes like this.
getting some action here. I can't tell if it's a crab or a fish. Oh, I think I'm on something. Yep, yep, yep. Got one. It's not huge. I don't really want to take him out of the water yet. Okay, let me get my net. Scoop him up into the net. Nope, missed. Okay, there you go. Got him. Uh, you want to give this hole a try? There we are. Hook set right at the bottom of that lip too. It's actually perfect. So that's a size four hook, guys. It's about the width of its mouth and he still went for it. There you are. They're pretty slimy though, but this is a monkey face prickleback eel. So you see those red spots and that tail that kind of looks, I don't know, almost like it glows like fire the way I see it. But yeah, that's a monkey face prickleback, relative of rockfish, although not a real eel. So, all right, let's keep going. So I'm actually gonna go back in the same hole too. Where there's one fish, there's probably another. My friend Frank, what's up? <laughs> but um, I caught him right here, so just go ahead and go down from there. Uh, you might need to go closer so that you can go from to a downward angle, because it was actually deeper than it was uh, inward. I, I think I see your pole shaking. Yeah. Was that, do you feel tugged? I feel tugged. Yeah, 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 there you go, there you go. That's what you want. Come on, man, let's get you on your first fish. Yeah. <laughs> so you gotta have like, um, once you feel him like tugging, right? That's when you know he's biting on it. And then just give him a good strong tug, set that hook through the lip, and then you're good. Let's see if he'll take this one. Oh yeah, he's still there. Yeah. yeah, he's still there, dude. I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna let you do that one. I don't want to take it. I don't want to take it from you. Come on, man. Let's let's get him out before my battery runs out. Because <laughs> I didn't bring him back up. You hear that? Oh, come on. Oh, he was on, dude. You gotta set the hook, though. You gotta set it hard. I, th I think I saw a flash of it for a little bit. So this is why I see... Oh, damn it. Sea urchins and mussels might just be my thing at this point. That's... I feel like that's how it always is starting out, man. I was... I was so... I don't know. I was so, like demoralized like the first couple of time it came out especially when you start using like a regular rod and reel like dude you're like throwing things in the ocean and then you like you just lose like 20 bucks worth of tackle i'm like dude this this sucks <laughs> until you learn how to do it all right unfortunately tide's coming back in and we couldn't catch that that fish out of that hole again so um i don't know what happened man it started run it just ran away and it didn't come back so um, sorry Frank, sorry Frank, couldn't get, couldn't get one on this one, huh? But we'll be back, and um, yeah, yeah hopefully this was a informative video for you guys, you know, kind of showed you guys the basics, and I'm still on that no skunk streak <laughs> doing uh, poke pulling, so hopefully you guys try this. So make that poke pull, I got a video on that already, and um, alright, hopefully I'll see some of you guys out here. If you guys see me, don't be afraid to say hi, and um, alright. Uh, if you haven't already, please do subscribe. It makes a huge difference. Um, and uh, yeah, like, comment, and I'll see you guys out here. See you.